And are you excited? Are you excited? God has a word for you. Are you excited? The women are like, uh, well, we didn't get that on Mother's Day. Well, that's your business, women. But God has a word for the men. Men, are you excited? God says he loves you. No matter what you're going through. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you that you're ready, Father Lord, even to bless your sons. We thank you for all the men in our lives. Thank you for this time, oh God, even to hear your word. Father, take it over. Holy Spirit, speak through me. Use me as your vessel. And let the Father alone be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, we come against every distraction. I will pray that this place will be the gateway to heaven. Angels will ascend and descend in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're celebrating our fathers today. We're celebrating our heroes. We're not just going to sit down and say hallelujah. If you're sitting beside a man, whether he's your husband, your brother, whether he's just a friend, just give them a hug. Give them a hug. Let's give our men hugs this morning. Give them a hug. Let's re let them receive the Father's love. Let them receive the Father's love. Nobody's giving pastor a hug. Can you imagine? I'm going to go down and give my husband a hug. Hallelujah. Are we scared of him? Hallelujah. Come on. Nobody's giving big daddy a hug here. Let's give them a hug. Hallelujah. Give them a hug and tell them we love you. 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 If you've not heard that, if you've never heard it before or you've not heard enough of it, you are going to hear more than enough of it this morning. Hallelujah. We love you, our fathers, our brothers. Hallelujah. And we're going to celebrate you this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for what you do in this house. Thank you for what you do in this house. We are nothing. Nobody's giving David a hug. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Receive our love, man. Our fathers, just receive. Just receive and bask in that love. I know you're men. I know you're men. And we, 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 we see you as a strong one. But you know what? Today, just be our babies. Let's pamper you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're celebrating our fathers. We're celebrating our heroes. Hallelujah. Our fathers are our heroes. Whether they are biological father, whether they are spiritual father, whether they are adoptive father, stepfather, your father figure, we are celebrating you today. I will say happy Father's Day to everyone joining us online, to all the fathers online. Happy Father's Day and know that we love you. We love you. And to the father of fathers, the king of kings. The immortal, the invincible, the only wise God. Hallelujah. The one that died that we might live. We give you all the glory, Father. We celebrate you today. We celebrate you always. And we come to say thank you for all you have done in our lives. Thank you for that which you're going to do. We just say thank you. We're grateful today. Hallelujah. 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 We are appreciating today the strength of our fathers. I know you're expecting me to bring a word. Hallelujah. But you know what the word is? The word is God loves you. God wants to appreciate you. You know, you know um, and I want to say something before I go on. You might think, oh, I'm not a father. I don't have a child yet. Yes, you are. For every man, that DNA is in you. That DNA is in you. Did you hear the, that video say, before I created you, I molded you. He put that DNA in you. Some of you are not fathers yet, 
But you know what? You have assumed that role probably at an early age. You have been the one there, maybe for your sisters, for your sibling. You know, you've always been the one they look up to. We want to appreciate you today. You are a father. You might not have your own biological child, but you've supported even to our young boys. Yeah, you're not fathers yet, but you have that DNA. You have that DNA in you. Hallelujah. And we're appreciating everyone this morning. Hallelujah. In fact, there is someone who nurtures, who nurtures and who protects, who provides. I know when I was little, when I was little, my brother was always there protecting me. Hallelujah. So you can see that DNA in him. Hallelujah. There's a father is a teacher, a teacher, a, a disciple, a, he disciplines, he supports a, a role model. Hallelujah. And we're celebrating all these attributes today in our men. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you know, sometimes... We look at our men and we just say, oh, man up. How many of you have heard man up? Come on, man up. But you know what? They're humans too. They are humans. They need to be celebrated. Hallelujah. They need to be celebrated. You know, we look so, we, 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 we place them on a high pedestal that if they take a left, left leg instead of the right one, everybody points accusing fingers. Because so much is expected of men. God has made them the head. You know, in, 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 in um, one of which is in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. It says, husband, loves, love your wife. Love your wife. He just said, love your wife. He didn't say, do this, do this, do that, do that. He said, love your wife. And so many times we tell our husbands, we tell our men, you don't love me, you don't love me. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. He said, love your wife as Christ loved the church. And we're celebrating. Men just received this morning. We are celebrating. We're saying, thank you. We love you. If you have not heard it enough this morning, we love you. To my husband, I love you. I love all you do. I love what, you know, the kind of role model you are. Hallelujah. We look at our men and we say, oh, you haven't done this, you haven't done this. But they've done a lot and I want to show you what they have done. I want you to appreciate in them. When you go home, if your husband is not here, your big brother, your, your child is not here, just, I just want you to go back and just love on them. And the first thing I'm going to talk about, about love, and to show you what our fathers have done, that they, today we want to celebrate it in their lives. We want to celebrate your faith. We want to celebrate your faith to all our men. We celebrate your faith. We thank you. You have the faith of Abraham. You have the faith of Abraham. We might think, oh, yeah, God told Abraham, get out of your father's kindred. Well, my husband has not left where he was. But I'm telling you, they've had faith in so many ways. That is their faith that is keeping us as women, as family, alive today. It's their faith that has carried us to where we are. I remember there was one time, this was a long time ago, my husband, he just came to me at night like almost the middle of the night. And he said, pack all your things. We're leaving tomorrow morning. I'm like, leaving for where? He said, I don't know. Ah, you don't know. He said, but we're leaving. He said, God said we're leaving. I said, you have to know where we're going. We can't just, we can't just, we can't just be going on. Pastor has said a lot of testimonies here. That you know what? It was his strength. But I sit there and I'm like, yeah, it's us. It's us. But today I want to say thank you. That you obeyed that voice. That you obeyed. You didn't know where you were going. You didn't. He told me, he said, pack your things. We are leaving tomorrow. And I asked, where are we going? He said, I do not know. We are here today. 
The rest is a story. But we are here today because you obeyed that voice. There are so many voices that our husbands have, our men have obeyed. The voice of God. And you know what? Sometimes they don't even tell us. They don't even tell us. The faith of Abraham. They trust God's word. Hallelujah. They trust God's word. Pastor gave a testimony here. He said we went to the store one day, right? If you remember. He said we went to the store one day and we didn't have money. And God said we should go grocery shopping. That was on him, oh. It wasn't me. It was on him. And I thank God that he can testify. He, can, he says, don't worry. And I'm like, are you sure? Are you sure? He said, just come. I'm behind you. Anything happens, me I'll, back, me I'll run. But God never fails. Hallelujah. So many times we are enjoying, we are enjoying the faith of our men. Of our men. Hallelujah. Let's say thank you to our men. Thank you for those faith that we never even saw. We didn't know how you battled it in your heart. But you spoke it and you lived it. Thank you. I want to say thank you to all the men. To those that are watching us. Hallelujah. The faith of Abraham. The faith of Abraham. They are willing to sacrifice. They are willing to sacrifice. We might think, oh, my, 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 my brother, or my our men, they've not sacrificed their son. But yes, they've sacrificed a lot. They have sacrificed a lot for us. And we want to appreciate you for all the sacrifice. For all the sacrifice, you know, yeah, some of you saw us on the, Pastor posted it. Last week, was it last week or this week, we went to watch that show, we went for the show. He sacrificed, he had something he had to do. But his daughter said, Daddy, can we go? And he said, I have to do this. And he said, well, and you know, when she was having the sad face, I'm like, oh, we have to honor her. And it's like, okay. He put aside what he had to do. So many times our men have put aside what they have to do. Because of us, can we say thank you to them? Can we say thank you? Can we celebrate them? We want to thank you for all those little sacrifices you do. Those little sacrifices you do that we just think, well, it's your job, you need to do it. No, he doesn't have to do it. He's just because he loves you. That's Christ loving the church. That he sacrificed himself for the church. Hallelujah. He sa they sacrifice their time. They sacrifice their resources. Hallelujah. They sacrifice so much. Sometimes, pastor has to do some things and I'm like, can you please help me iron those clothes? And he goes, okay. And he irons them. And guess what? You know, you know women. <laughs> you know we women. And I'm like, oh, actually, I don't think I want to wear that anymore. And he's like, after I starched this thing, <laughs> I touched this clothes. I made this clothes look so... I'm like, uh, uh thank you. Thank you for all those times. He said, and he had things to do. But he left it to come and attend. And I bring out one, two, and he will iron everything. Hallelujah. And I'll pick. Oh, you know, how many times have we, our husband done things for us and we're like, sorry, I don't need, I don't need to use it anymore. Or oh, our brothers... For us that have brothers. Hallelujah. Or somebody has even helped us. Maybe your colleague at work. And you're like, oh, I don't need to do it anymore. After the person has sacrificed. Hallelujah. Can we appreciate them? Can we appreciate our amen? Can we appreciate our men? Can we appreciate our fathers for all their sacrifices? Hallelujah. For being hospitable. Another thing. They are hospitable. That's how Christ loved the church. You can't tell me your husband is not hospitable. You can't tell me that man, our men in this house are so hot. Oh my goodness, they're so hospitable. If we call for anything, you will see the men rise up. 
I'm sure if anything happens now, if I just strip now, the first person that will get on this stage will be a man. The women will be sitting there and be like, what's wrong with her? <laughs> but the men will be like, oh no, nothing must happen to her. They are hospitable, they are kind. Hallelujah. They are they're hospitable. They receive people. Hallelujah. They receive. Our men are generous. Abraham was generous. Jesus Christ was generous to the church. Hallelujah. He might not have given you the, the, maybe the car you want, but he's generous in his ways. Can you appreciate those little things? Can we say thank you to our fathers today? You know, sometimes we have to do something, and I tell my husband, oh, maybe we have to give someone something, and I'm like, well, I'm thinking, well, I have something in my heart. And I ask him, and I'm thinking, maybe this is too much. Maybe he's going to say it's too much. And I ask him, what should we do? What are we giving? And by the time he calls something, it's way more than what I'm thinking. I'm like, wow, thank you, Jesus. You know, so many times, they brought joy to us. They have brought joy to us because that's who God made them to be. He said, love your wives. As Christ loved the church. That is the heart of the Father. You saw it. He says, I am your Father. I am the Father of the Fathers. You have my DNA in me. I want to say thank you to our husbands for being hospitable, for receiving people. You know, we used to have a neighbor, and this guy would come and, well, he put himself in whatever situation he was in. And you might be here this morning. Maybe your self-esteem has been really brought down. Your ego has been trampled upon. And you think you're, you, you, know, you're, you, you know you're a man. But I'm a man. But your head is down. I'm still coming back to that story. You know, God has a word for you. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter if you are the one that put yourself in that situation. It doesn't matter if it's just the world that is labeling. You know, the world is quick at labeling somebody. You know, God is lifting you up today. He's lifting your head up today. He said it that I love you. He's wrapping his arms of love around you. He's placing back that strength in you. Hallelujah. That grace to move on. Hallelujah. And this man will come and knock on our door sometimes. And he will maybe be drunk or something. And he will ask first of all. And I'm like, do you know this man? And at some point, he will let him into the house. I'm like, ah, you don't know this man. He's like, it's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Because you just wanted to be nice. You just wanted to be hospitable. So many times we've questioned our men. We've questioned our fathers. Are you sure what you're doing? Do you think this is thing is not going to backfire? They don't even care if it backfires. God will take care of it. They have welcomed. And at some point he will even, this man will come and knock on the door and he will go and take him to the store. And he doesn't care. Thank you. Thank you for those gestures that you did. You were teaching us how to love. You were teaching us how to love. I want to thank our fathers. Remember, we're celebrating them. Just if, when, if you remember what your dad has, uh, your, your spouse, your brother, you can text them, your dad. Well, maybe you didn't hear me talk about my dad. My dad is in heaven. My dad passed away two years ago, so I can't say thank you to him anymore, but I know Jesus has said thank you on our behalf, you know. But for those that are living, let's celebrate them. Let's celebrate them. They take care of the children. They change the diapers. They do this. They cook. They do that. You all know what I went through. You know what I went through. Nobody knew when I was going through it. You didn't know. But my husband was there. He was there. He was there. I want to say thank you once again. 
He was there. He was there. So many times, I would throw up, and he's there packing the thing. He didn't do, uh, he never did. We were always together. Even at the hospital, they were like, what kind of man are you? Some men would have run away. He was there. He was there when I couldn't talk, and I'm like, mm, 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 mm. and he's like, what? Try and try, try. You could see how worried he was. He was there. When he brought, when I was, <laughs> when I was expecting for food, and I didn't, I wanted something to drink, and I didn't know what to drink. At the end of the day, we found this peach juice, and my husband just thought, oh. She finally got something to drink. And he went to the store and he chattered the peach juice. And he brought home maybe like 10 bottles of peach juice. As soon as I saw him, I'm like, what is this? I don't want it. And he's like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just thought you loved it. I said, no, I don't want it anymore. And he said, it's okay. It's okay. I'll take it away. How many, how many times have we done that? And they're still there, loving us. Thank you. Thank you, hallelujah, for those little, little things you have done. Thank you. you people might see it as little, but that's the thing that is keeping us alive today. And those are the things people see in you. You know, those are the things people see in you and they appreciate. Hallelujah. And you are, are in intercessor like our father Abraham. Remember I'm talking about the heroes. I'm going to be talking about heroes in the Bible. When you hear of Abraham, you're like, oh Abraham is a great man. Great father. Yes, the father sitting right beside you is a great man. He's a great father. Hallelujah. He's a great father like Abraham. He intercedes so many times in his closet. You guys have no idea how pastor mentions names in the morning. How he mentions names every day. How he mentions names because he just desires for a change in our lives. Sometimes he will raise a prayer point and I'm like, I didn't even know about this. And I'm like, what happened? And it's like, before he says it. And it just says, so Abraham interceded for the people. Hallelujah. That's how Christ loves the church. Her husbands have prayed. Her men have prayed. Hallelujah. My brother called me yesterday. And we're just talking. Just talking. And just, just still like brother and sister. And the next thing he said, pray for. Just keep this person in prayer. The person is not even around us. Why did he say keep this person in prayer? Because he wanted a breakthrough for that person. Look at the father's heart. Look at our men's hearts. Thank you. Thank you to all our men. You might not have said it, but we are saying thank you this morning. We celebrate you. You are our hero. You, you intercede like Moses, like Abraham. And you know what? They are so humble. Men are so humble. We might think men have ego. But you know what? Men are so humble. How many of you do drama? Women. Okay, if you don't do drama, put your hands up. If you're a woman in this house, you don't do drama, let me see your hands up. She doesn't do drama. She doesn't do drama. Oh. Because maybe you don't know the qualification of what, what drama means. We all do drama. You don't do drama. You don't do drama. You, even, you have done drama for me this morning. <laughs> We all do drama. Oh, no, I don't want that. I just told you how I told Pastor, I'll take away everything. And he's like, I'm sorry. If anything happens, you know, men will just, they, they just walk away. And sometimes that aggravates us as women, right? We will talk and talk and talk and talk and they just pretend like they never heard. They're humble. Thank you. Maybe sometimes that even pushes us to God. Hallelujah. I want to say thank you. We all do drama so many times. 
So many times we do drama in my house. We do drama. If you don't do drama in your house, oh, every second, <laughs> every second in my house we are dramatizing. If I'm not dramatizing, my daughter is dramatizing. If she, the one here is not dramatizing, the one in New York is calling to dramatize. Hey, you, hey, there is this one. Ah, oh, and that will be. We all do drama, but you know what? If anything happens, you see men just come. Like, you know what? Let's solve this thing. It doesn't have to. But we men, we want to keep it going, right? We want to keep it going. However far it can go. But the men just come and they don't just douse it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for dousing. Thank you for your humility, your meekness. Hallelujah. God called Moses his friend. You know how the Israelites did drama? The Israelites was one drama after the other. One drama after the other. When they get this, oh, who told you to make it? Who told you I wanted green? I want a dress. Now he bought a dress. He bought a green dress. Who told you I wanted green? Now he has to take it back. What color do you want? I want black. He bought the black. Oh, there's a speck on it. That was what the Israelites did. And they still go back to change it. They're still willing to go back and make it right. Thank you. Thank you to our men this morning. Hallelujah. And guess what? They have the strength of David. How many people know that our men have the strength of David? Hallelujah. Thank you for that strength. Thank you for that strength. They have killed so many Goliaths. It might not be the Goliath of Gath. But they have killed so many Goliaths that we are not even aware of. And they don't even tell us. You know, my daughter might be downstairs sometimes studying or doing whatever she's doing. And sometimes at 2 a.m., 3 a.m., she'll send a text. Dad, come now. This man is sleeping. He wakes up as, thank God for phone, phone ringers, right? His ringer says, your daughter is calling. He wants, she wants to talk to you. Your daughter is calling. Would you like to let her through? As soon as he hears, your daughter is calling, he picks his phone from sleep. Then she'll be like, dad, come. There's a bug. There's a bug. <laughs> then he goes and just finds out it's a firefly. And he has to kill the firefly. <laughs> Hallelujah. That, that bug was how Goliath too. That bomb was her Goliath. Because if the dad didn't come that, that time, she was stuck right there. There are so many Goliaths. Situations. Situations present itself. And we're like, I don't even know what to do. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm at a crossroad. And that situation is like staring you right in the face. But you, that man comes, your brother comes, your spouse comes, the pastor comes, your husband comes and tells you, let's do it this way. So many times I do things that I just want him to put his own word. Because I know when he puts his word, I'm kind of at peace. We call them all the time. We call them over and over. <laughs> I'm just confessing. Some, some of these things, I'm confessing my sins. And I'm, and I'm really, really appreciating my husband. I'm really appreciating him. I'll tell him, can you please help me get this? He brings it. Oh, can you get that? He goes and gets it. Oh, you know, he likes to drink cold water. And at night, he wants to drink cold water in the winter. And he has this very chilled water that he will tell me. Send me everything you want to send me now. <laughs> because he knows I'm still going to send him something. <laughs> right? And he will say, send me everything you want to send me. What do you want me to do? What do you want me to get? Because as soon as I drink this water, I'm getting under the covers. He has his hat. Everything is ready. His socks is on. His hat is on. He's like, send me. Somebody, 
If he doesn't love the church, if he doesn't love me, if he doesn't love the family, he's not going to come and say that. He's just going to think about himself. He's just going to drink his water. And he's just going to get it under the covers. And if you call him, can you please, he's just, can't you see that I just drank water? Excuse me. But because of the love of God in his heart, he sheds it and he transfers it to others. Thank you to all our men. Thank you for every single love you have transferred that we, you did. And you know what? Sometimes you were expecting a thank you at that moment, but you never got one. This is the time for us to say thank you. This is the time for us to say thank you. This is the time for us to say thank you. He's been a shepherd. He's been a shepherd. And, you, and not just for fathers, not just for biological fathers, even men, men, hallelujah. You know, you've been a shepherd. You've been, you've been directing, helping, you know, nurturing. But you never get a pat on your back. You don't even care sometimes, but we're saying thank you. We're saying thank you. Can we put a, our hands together for our men? <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's celebrate our men. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate our men. Hallelujah. You have been in relationship with God. You know, you cannot do all the things if you don't have a relationship with God. Hallelujah. And your relationship with God has even transferred to your family. I don't know about you. I get tired sometimes in the morning. I don't want to get up. Hallelujah. Sometimes I don't want to get up. I have my own time. Sometimes I don't want to get up. But you know what? When it's my husband's time. He's just so consistent. I'm like, where does he get his strength from? Where does he get his strength from? You know, it's because he's making a conscious effort. Hallelujah. And he leads us into the presence. So many times I ride on his own wings. I'm like, I hide behind him. When I don't do what I'm supposed to do. When you hide, you put the man in front. Go, let me hide behind you. Hallelujah. We've hidden behind our brothers. Hallelujah. We've hidden behind our friends because we were not prepared. And we want to say thank you for all the preparations. Thank you for leading us into the, into the presence of the Lord. Thank you for the altar, the altar of praise, hallelujah. The altar of worship that you always create, the atmosphere that you create, the atmosphere that you create. You know, we just come in and you just see joy. You see joy because somebody has made an effort to create that atmosphere. Sometimes you get into a place and all you can feel is rage. But we want to say thank you to our men. We travel and the first thing you do, you put on the music and you put on the gospel music and you put on, you know, inspiring things. And all we're hearing, all we're hearing your daughter calls you. You're talking to your daughter. The first thing you say is you bless them. It doesn't matter if the world has told them otherwise. You tell them the right thing. You tell them the word of God. Thank you. Thank you. We just want to say thank you for those little things that we didn't appreciate you for. We say thank you. Thank you for that environment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for being our king. Amen, our king. Hallelujah. Amen, our king. And a king always wants for his kingdom to have peace. And they will go at every length. They will go at every length. Hallelujah. Thank you for being our king. Thank you for always bringing peace. Even when you're trying so hard. You're trying so hard. But really in your heart. What you want is peace. Thank you. What you want is for everyone to be comfortable. Thank you for being our king. Jesus wanted everyone to be comfortable. Hallelujah. 
And remember, we are not talking about perfect people here. We're just picking out the little things they do. And we're saying thank you to them. And remember, when you say thank you, you get more. You get more. Hallelujah. You have encouraged yourself. You have encouraged yourself so many times. You have faced situations, financial situations, and you will not let anybody know about it. Sometimes I'll see my husband and ask him, what's wrong? He'll say, don't worry, it's going to be okay. Just tell me what it is. He says, don't worry. He says, oh, you see, somebody has said, <laughs> can you say thank you to him for that? Can you say thank you? Thank you. Thank you. You see him gloomy. And he doesn't want you to partake of it. Instead, he keeps it to himself. Sometimes they will say, oh, men don't share. It's not that they don't want to share. They just don't want to put burdens on us. We say thank you. They don't want to put burdens on their children. We say thank you. Thank you. You encourage yourself. And you keep moving. You know, sometimes you fall. We are all human beings. Hallelujah. How many of us make mistakes? On a daily basis, we do. On a daily basis, pastor was the first person to raise his hands up. You fall. You make mistakes. You say what you're not supposed to say. Hallelujah. But immediately you repent. I'm sorry. You repent to, your, to people. You repent to God. Over and over. You choose to. Hallelujah. You're a friend. You're a friend. I can always go, I can, like I said, I can call my brother. I can call my husband. I can, the men in this house, I can call you at any time. And you will pick up the call. Thank you. Thank you that you're a friend. Thank you that you're a friend. A friend can rely on somebody else. I'm sure if I, if I, if, if I get stuck somewhere, I call the LJJ, he's going to come running. He's going to come running. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. And you know what? One more thing. The wisdom of Solomon. Hallelujah. Wisdom. Our men are filled with wisdom. You're filled with wisdom. How many of you know they are filled with wisdom? Hallelujah. They have wisdom like Solomon. When the father comes, when the father says, Solomon will say, my child, my son. He doesn't, you know, we women, we come forcefully, right? We come, we think we know what is right. Then we come, do it this way, do it that way, do it that way. We come forcefully, but men will just come quietly. Solomon will say, my son. Don't, when, when evil men entice you, don't follow them. You know, is talking like a word is enough for the wise. They speak gently, but they are filled with wisdom. When our men are talking, don't say, you're not my father. You're not my daddy. Why should you tell me what to do? Even from a child, from a child, I can remember one day, this little boy here, he came to pastor and says, what's your name? And pastor told him, and he said, God bless, God will bless you. You, and he, he made a prophecy. He said, you will live long from a child. The Bible says, out of the mouth of babes and suckling, God has ordained strength. Don't despise it. Don't say, who are you, little boy, to tell me what to do? Sometimes God will just use that little boy to come and tell you what you should do. Listen. Thank you for all the words of wisdom. Thank you for the words of wisdom. Hallelujah. And the last thing is that he makes our men make us fly. <laughs> There's a man in the Bible, we just did it in the women's podcast. Hallelujah. And his name is called Lapidoth. Lapidoth, and he has a wife called Deborah. Hallelujah. He gave that woman the opportunity to fly. He says, be who you, God has called you to be. She was a wife. She was a mother. She was a prophetess. She was a judge. She's like, go on. Go on. Thank you for making us fly. Thank you for always being there. 
Thank you for always being there. I make cakes, you all know that. If I want to make fondant, you see that fondant is pastel. It's pastel, don't think it's me. It's pastel. Tell, I'll tell him, can you please help me need, do the coloring? He's like, what do you want me to do? And he would do it. And when we have to go and deliver the cake, he's the one. He makes, they make us fly. Thank you. Thank you to all our men. Thank you for that opportunity. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. We are so, we can trust you. You're trustworthy. You give us that security. Thank you. And before I close this morning, if you don't have Christ in you, you can love like Jesus Christ loved the church. You can't do all these things. I know you do them. Don't get me wrong. You do them. Every man does them because they have the DNA of Christ. DNA of God. But when you have Jesus in your life as your Lord and your Savior, it will be effortless. You will be effortless. You will do it without regretting. You know how you can make do help sometimes and because the person don't say thank you, you're like, why did I even help this person? You don't look for thank you. You don't look for thank you. You just do it because that's what Jesus will do. Hallelujah. If you don't have Christ, if Jesus Christ is not the Lord of your life, you can do all these things effortlessly. And I want to give that opportunity this morning. I want to give that opportunity to those that do not know Christ. To those that want to make Jesus their Lord and their Savior. Hallelujah. We're celebrating you. We're celebrating you this morning. Let's close our eyes as we pray. Let's bow down our heads and close our eyes. I want you to, if you want to accept the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want you to say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I make you my Lord and my personal Savior today. Come and lead me in my life. And come and help me to live according to your commands. In the name of Jesus. I believe you are the Son of God. And I believe that you rose again to give me victory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. It's very easy. It's very easy. And I pray that you will start to take a new level. It's a level. You've been doing it, but you're moving up to a higher level of grace in Jesus' name. And happy Father's Day to all our men. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.